It's Mailbag Monday again, my favorite day of the week. Today I will be pairing it with Stone Angel Brewing's Highlander Wee Scotch Heavy Ale. Complex malt and caramel character with a warm alcohol presence. Mmm, satisfying beer for the cold winter months, indeed. Very nice. Let's start with plastic PCB modules. Hmm, it's four little switches on a breakout board. A ground and then the four switches there. I think that is for an Arduino. Uh, if we put ground, oh, I don't know, say there. And the four switches there on D10 through D14. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I'm guessing that I bought it as a complement to these little LED modules. However, I'm just noticing that that sits in the same position. I mean, I suppose I could put it there, put that there and drive pin seven low and then use the rest of these to take them high. Although I'm not sure how much current you can sink. I know you can source only a few milliamps, but I think you can sink a little bit more. Hmm. Or I suppose I could do it this way. And uh, yeah, set to uh, say in this case pin six as a as a low, and then read the other er, pins uh, three or two, three, four, and five. Hmm. Couple of options. Or of course, if I don't need the LEDs, I can just plug that in there like I originally thought. Arduino keypad, four button key module, switch keyboard for Uno, Mega 2560 breadboard. Yeah, um, I got this one from Canton Electric, sorry, Canton Electronic for buck 31 Canadian or 99 American pennies. There's much to say here, can be inserted directly into an Uno or Mega or in a breadboard or other MCUs. Yeah, four button common cathode key, mo common cathode key module. It's just common. There's no anode or cathode to push buttons, you silly peoples. Mm, yeah, that's nice and warming on a cool winter's evening. Next in, we have Car Stricker times two. Hmm. I wonder what that is. It is two big honking resistors. These are two 25 watt 8 ohm resistors. Specifically bought those for testing amplifiers without speakers involved. Um, so I can push a little bit of power out of the amplifier without deafening myself. And, you know, to like burn it in or something like that. 25 slash 50 slash 100 watt 0 0.01 up to 5k ohm watt shell power aluminum housed case wire wound resistor. That's a keyword jumble. Uh, got these from Sungua, I think. Um, 8 ohms, 25 watts. There's a large selection that you can pick from here. Um, and I paid a buck 31 each, so 262. And it was free shipping back when I bought these many months ago. Lots and lots of different values available. Not much else to say. They're just big ass resistors with heat sinks built into them. Next in, we have, what does it say here? Hmm. Openers, it calls itself. Okay. A little bit floppy to be an opener. I can't imagine what will be opener that I would order. Spudgers? Beer opener? No, it's a blue circle. Hmm. Stuck between... Okay, it is a little blue circle of, feels like silicone rubber or something. Why would I order that? Well, because when I'm soldering, if I'm soldering stuff just flat down on the bench, like something like that, or even a surface mount that I'm soldering, um, the heat is bad for the cutting mat. It tends to make them warp and stuff. They're not, they're, they're cut resistant. You can do that to them, but if you heat them, they deform and warp. 
So a little silicone pad can take the heat. Matter of fact, when I, when I was given this iron, it came with a little silicone pad. Clearly I'd ordered this months before. This one here is at least twice as thick. This isn't all that thick. Um, so that's up why I ordered that anyway, just for to keep or for uh, soldering on, so they don't damage my uh, cutting mat. It's also good for just setting the glue, the hot glue gun on, so that you don't get uh, hot glue spooged all over everything and don't damage your surface. Home and kitchen gadgets, bottle lid, pot holder, silicone opener, pad openers. Oh, okay, that's why they called it an opener. Sure. Um, got this from Finest Hair, free shipping. I paid a dollar thirty-one, um, and I searched for the absolutely cheapest one I could find because I wasn't sure if it would work for what I wanted or not. Currently, they seem to be selling them for two ninety-four Canadian. So it claims to be able to tolerate a temperature range up to two hundred thirty degrees Celsius, presumably, which is a little bit lower than uh, than soldering temperature which is, you know, in the 300 to 400 degree range. So we'll see if it holds up. Regardless, it was cheap and it's an experiment. However, while I was waiting for that to show up and I kind of forgot that I'd ordered it, I found this at my local dollar store for two bucks. So anyway, let's get this guy out and just see if it's any better at all. This one is sold as a hot glue gun pad. Um, to protect work surfaces, non-skid, all the rest of that good stuff. It doesn't say what temperature it's good for, but it's much bigger. And it only costs $2, only slightly more than this guy. Well, let's just try a little experiment here. So I've got my iron set to 370 degrees Celsius. And we'll just see what happens to this mat here. Or this one from the dollar store. Let's let that cool down a little bit so I don't hurt myself. Oh well, that's pretty insulating actually. That's cool in and of itself. So let's scrape that out of the way. That did absolutely no damage. It slightly discolored it. Interesting. And this one, scrape the flux off. It was right there, you can't even tell. Excellent! I think that will do the job quite nicely. And for dirt cheap, too. Okay, what is next? Two times circuit board. Sounds like something I would order. Get out. I see two static bags. Oh! These have. ESP8266 or ESP something modules on them. Lots of those. This is a D1 Mini. Oh, nice. With a CHC40 on the back of it. Okay. I used the last one of these that I had in stock for my Christmas lights project. So these will be a restocking for that. Times two. Cool. And I like that they come with all the options for header pins. So you can put the long stackable females on, you can put the normal females on, or you can put males on, or some combination of them. And then you get extras to put in your stash. Always a bonus. Lua ESP8266 ESP12 Wemos D1 Mini Wi-Fi 4 megabytes Wi-Fi Development Board Module. Got this one from SPO Motor. Yeah, they actually sold them for $1.31 each, and that's why I bought two of them. Currently... They say they don't ship to Canada, although clearly at one point they did. Not sure how deep we need to go into this. We all know, I think, what a, what a D1 Mini is. Um, obviously, these are knockoffs, but whatever. This is all open source hardware, so it doesn't really matter. Um, 11 digital IOs. Uh, all pins are interrupt or PWM or I2C, one way, except for digital zero. D0 is special because that has to be held, down, held low during boot up in order to put it into programming mode. So it's the one that you want to avoid using most of the time. It has one analog input. It has a micro USB connection. And it has an assortment of pins. Just like it shows there. Just like we actually got. That's awesome. And the last thing in. It says it's a mark pen. Hmm. 
It's not a Mark pen. It is a Fox pen. Theoretically branded Yosker Fox pen. I don't know what all that says. No Queen Flux. Lots of Chinese writing on the side there. Depress tip to start flux flow. Keep cap on. Keep out of reach of children. Do not take internally. Really? Uh, what number? So this was made in May of 2019. It has two year shelf life. And it is from Suzhou, China. I assume that's probably what all this over here says. Okay. So it's... Ah. Little felt tip is well out of there so it's not being pressed in while it's uh, in transit. Good. Um, hmm. Okay, it's leaving a bit of a puddle. Hmm. But what you would expect. Now, I do have another flux pin here. This one claims to be Kester. Um, I also got it from China. It says basically all the same things over here. It's very similar. The cap's a little bit different. This one is really flowy. I have to actually keep it sitting this way on my shelf. But I've used this one quite a bit, so I figured I'd grab another one before that one ran out. 10 milliliters Yosker 951 Rosin Flux Pen DIY Solar Panels for Electrical Soldering. Or anything that isn't solar panels as well. Uh, I paid buck 61 Canadian or 99 pence British money. Um, that was from Intel Trading, International Trading, but you know, and, and free shipping. Does it say much about it down here for rework and touch of surface mount, felt tips, um, yeah, surface mount and through hole, automotive computer telecom, low solids, compatible with lead and lead free solders. It's lead free itself. It better be. If touch skin, please wash in timely lest it cause skin irritation. Oops, I guess I shouldn't have wiped it up off the bench with my fingers. Uh, don't take internally. Keep out of reach of children. Yeah, it probably makes horrible mix with my beer. I got curious about why they call it 951 model. And the other one that I've got that claims to be Kester is also 951. So in searching for 951 solder flux, it takes me among other places here. So they're probably just using Kester's modeling, model numbers. There's no guarantee that it is the same chemistry. Who knows with this stuff from China, but it seems to work, so what the hell. Hmm, I wonder how much Kester would charge for 53 gallons of flux. Probably should ask Lewis Rossman, because I'm sure that's the quantities that he buys it in. And there is the contents of today's Mailbag Monday. Um, travel times. Their power resistors were four and a half weeks. The little push buttons were also four and a half weeks. The Para D1 Minis was exactly one month. The Flux Pen was 20 days. And this guy was eight weeks. Which is probably why I forgot about it. And drove down to my Dollarama and bought this one. Which took me you know, half an hour to go and get. So something that people have mentioned in the comments of the last couple of mailbags is coronavirus. Don't worry. This stuff took, I think mean, almost all of it took a month to get here. And it's been languishing in my uh, first in, first out buffer since November, most of this stuff. So I'm fine. It's, I mean, it's, it's low risk anyway. Uh, getting, it's unclear if you can even catch it off surfaces very effectively. And even if you can, like I said, this stuff took a month in transit to get here through variations in temperatures. It was probably x-rayed at the uh, at the border. Um, I'm fine. I'm not worried. And you shouldn't be worried about me either. Plus, of course, I sanitize with alcohol. Now, thanks for watching. As always, I really do appreciate it. Comments and questions down below as usual. Thanks especially to my Patreon supporters who help me finance all this silliness. Um, yes, they're enablers, and I love it. Well, I will talk to you guys later.